I give the glory. It is to you. I give the praise. For you have done so much for me. And I will magnify your name. It is to you.
Just worship the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship. supreme in our lives. God, we come before you, humble, Lord God, having nothing, God, 
we are empty before you. But we come, Lord God, with our empty vessels, wanting you, Lord God, to fill us up, Lord God. Fill us up today, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come, Lord God, knowing that you are able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. We ask for your mercies, Lord God, because we need mercy. Lord God, your mercy, the songwriter said, mercy, they were great and grace was free. Pardon, Lord, they were multiplied. We need some multiplied pardon for our sins, Lord God. We need covering this evening, Lord God. Most of all, God, we need your blessing. We need your anointing. We need your power. We need your hand to be upon our lives this evening, Lord God. We commit everything before you today, Lord God. We empty ourselves that you will fill us up with your anointing, Lord God. We pray for those in cyberspace, God. Those who are listening, they might be in their bedrooms or they might be in their kitchen. They might be doing whatever chores they are doing, Lord God. We know that you can do more than they are doing right now, Lord God. The thing you can do, you can bless them. We ask for a double portion of your blessing on those that are listening right now, Lord God. As we go forward, Lord God, into this service, we pray that you bless this service. We pray especially, Lord God, for the ministering of your word, for the teaching of your word, that as the word go forth, Lord God, hearts will be touched, hearts will be convinced, and they be drawn to know you. We commit everything in your hand this evening in the name of Jesus. And for your glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise God. Praise God. Our scripture reading will be taken from 1 Thessalonians 5, reading from verses 1 to verse 10. Praise God. But of the time and the seasons, brethren, he have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Praise him. But he, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Verse 10, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Praise God. You are welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel you desire. To abide in the praises of your people, so we lift our hearts as we lift our voice as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. Oh, you are welcome into this place welcome into this broken vessel you desire to abide in the 
praises of your people. So we lift our hearts as we lift our voice as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. My God, you are welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hearts. As we lift our voice, as we offer up the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are his people. Amen. We have come this far by faith and we are leaning on the Lord and we continue on that same path. We're so glad that you have chose to join us for Word Explosion as we confidently move forward. We are his people who are determined to go all the way. COVID will not stop us and we are happy that you have not allowed it to prevent you from worshiping with us. Here in the tabernacle and on cyberspace, God's blessing be upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. You're welcome. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves. Hallelujah. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tide in all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land. Climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onwards it's our Lord's command. Jesus saves. Jesus saves, walking on the rolling tides. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, tell the sinner far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing the isles of the sea. Echo back the ocean caves. Heard the sheep, heard jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom When the heart for Mary craved Sing the trumpet or the tomb Jesus saves, Jesus saves Give the wind a mighty voice Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nation now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, so salvation full and free, heights and hill and deepest cave. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus, let's sing again, give the wind a mighty voice, give the wind a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nation now rejoice, Jesus saves, 
Jesus said, let the nation now rejoice. This our song of victory, Jesus saved, Jesus, this our song of victory, this our song of victory, Jesus saved, Jesus Saves. Could we just lift our hands and worship the Lord? Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Praise. Hallelujah. And as we prepare our hearts for the word of God this evening, we know that our God saves and he keeps and he's satisfied. We pray that your heart will be open as we introduce our teacher for the evening, our pastor, Pastor Lira Dawson. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Dawson. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Williams. You may be seated, everyone. Thank you so much. What, what a, what a, what a proclaim, what a, what a refrain to come into a time of worship and to share the word of God than to hear the sweet refrain, Jesus saves. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Jesus saves. Give the wind a mighty voice let all creation praise his name the sun moon and stars no wonder david says the heavens declare the glory of god and the firmament show it his handiwork day and today utter its speech night and the night utter knowledge what a god we serve yes, yes, yes. i think he deserves a round of applause from his people don't you think Hallelujah. Can we give him, yes, beautiful, beautiful presence of God that's in the house. Hallelujah. We are giving him thanks because he's good. We are giving him thanks because we love him. We are giving him thanks because he hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Yes, 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 yes. And we are so delighted to be back again to worship God and to break the bread of life. And to encourage some people on their journey. These studies are designed to bring new folk in. And for those who are walking with God with a five, six, or 50 years. To encourage you to keep on walking. But more importantly, as you keep on walking, keep on fighting. Fight this good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life because if you are not fighting there will be no reward praise the lord jesus so again we welcome you and thank you for joining us for sharing with us and we thank our friend from pennsylvania who shared with us how important the word of god has been to her we thank you so much and it is our Jesus joy to know that we are reaching you but not us but the Lord is reaching you through his words and we want to encourage you to keep going forward to that person in Oregon thank you for the other person in New Jersey we want to thank you so much it's a Jesus joy to hear from you and in England we thank you so much. God, which you bless you for allowing the word of God to reach you. And even in Hungary, we thank you so much. God, which you bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. We also want to thank those who have been responding to our prayer line. And uh, even though late in coming, we want to thank you for your sharing your prayer request with us. And it is our burden and desire to take you and your needs to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in the time of need. Continue to share with us. Send your prayer requests in to us. Particularly, you could call us on a Monday and on Fridays from in three different slots each of these specific days 
Mondays from 10 a.m. until 12 noon, from 12 noon until 2 p.m., and from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m., our prayer line will be very active and someone will receive a call from you. Take your request and the church will go to prayer. But on the spot, you will be prayed for as you call in. We are looking forward to sharing with you. Our number is 876-486-5112. God, which bless you is our desire to serve you until the Lord comes in Jesus' name. Thank you, all the saints of God in the house. It's a pleasure. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being alert and turning the searchlight on. Praise the Lord Jesus. So as we continue the study that we're looking at, under the theme, possessing the spiritual advantage and putting on, therefore, the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand. Our key verse is coming from Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Praise the Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Let's do that again. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So we were emphasizing last time we met the critical importance of having on the helmet of salvation. We have dealt with the pieces of, garment, of, of armor that went before and we are rounding up our, our study on the helmet of salvation. And this Helmet is no ordinary hat. This helmet is not a sports hat that you wear. There's somebody like Brother James who likes to wear a sport hat. But these days he's not sporting a hat for the sake of putting on a hat. These days he sports his hat to hide the sheen. So we... Thank him for wearing the hat. Sorry that he can't wear it in church because we would not be so blinded. Um, but God is good to us. We serve a great big wonderful God. And so the last time we were looking at aspects of the helmet of salvation. And we know we mentioned the fact that the helmet must be interpreted in light of how the scripture intended. So we recognize that the helmet was intended to be a coverage of salvation. Therefore, we looked at Psalm 27, 1, which reminds us that Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? shall I be afraid. But the salvation of the righteous is the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. So the helmet is likened unto salvation. Isaiah 12 reminds us, Behold, God is my helmet, my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid when I go to war. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, and he also has become my helmet. So we can't do without him in battle. The helmet, therefore, is indispensable. Isaiah 25, 9 reminds us, And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him. And he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his helmet. 
we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We will be glad and rejoice in his head covering. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Reinforcing the fact that the Lord is our salvation, is our helmet in battle. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 reminds us, The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will rejoice over thee with singing. Praise the Lord Jesus. Romans. Romans. I love this one. Romans chapter 5 verse 10 and 11. Uh, something that is dear to me. I hope it becomes dear to you. For if when we were enemies, Brother Matheson, we were reconciled or we made up to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled when we make up to God, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we now receive the atonement or the cover up or the helmet. Praise the Lord Jesus. So John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2 says, Beloved, beloved, precious people of God, precious saints of God, Ones who have started this journey. Those of you who have committed your life to God. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Hallelujah. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Finally, Romans chapter, we, this is where we stop. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 to 24 is where we stopped the last time. And I wish together we could do this as we move forward in the name of the Lord Jesus. Bro Williams, you're by a mic. Would you just take that mask off and just read to the glory of God? For we know that the whole work creation groaneth and travail it in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Hallelujah. For we know. We are not asking, Brother Richards. We know. There are some things, Brother Matthias, and we are permitted to know. And God give us the redemptive power and ability to perceive and know. So the scripture is saying that we know that the whole creation is groaning. Everything that God made. Can you think about it, Sister Richards? The hills and the mountain, the forest. Everything is crying out. Even the animals. Everything is crying out. It's God's creation, that's it. Can you believe that? Even those fishes in the seas are, are crying out and said, when are the sons of men going to be revealed? We want a change. We want a change. But not only the creation groans, the Bible said, we ourselves groan within ourselves. We have the first fruits of the Spirit of God. And we groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, waiting for that day when we are fully adopted and are in our adopted country, heaven. Knowing that there will be no more death, no more pain, and God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no signs. 
nor crying. For we are saved by hope. Can somebody say that with me, please? Sister Taylor said, I need to hear your voice. One more time. That's the budding teacher. We are saved by hope. Counting every syllables. We are saved by hope. Trying to emphasize everything. We are saved, Sister Jameson, by hope. Any morning we get up in our house and our hope is gone, we are virtually dead. But it's because we have hope why we put our clothes on and go to work. It is because we have hope why we get out and do stuff. Because we are all looking for a better tomorrow. We are looking for oh God Almighty that my tomorrow is better than my yesterday. So I keep going. So Sister Richard, may I sing to you? So be strong. Let me talk then. Because you're not going to be thrilled by my voice since I'm not Mr. Sir. So be strong and keep on going. Don't be angry when things go wrong. Don't give up. It's almost over. All the signs are pointing towards home. All those things that cause your tummy to hurt you and make your head hurt you in the night time and the groanings that you are groaning, it will be over shortly. That's right. I have hope when trouble comes my way. I have hope. I have hope. I have hope. We have hope that sets us free. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody need to clap your hands to God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. So, this elaborate, moving forward, this is elaborated on this hope, this helmet of salvation is elaborated on in Isaiah 59, verse 17, we dealt with that earlier. And the parallel term, not just the helmet of salvation, but the helmet of hope of salvation. The helmet of hope of salvation. So you see, they are interchangeable terms. That means the same thing. The helmet of salvation. So we have the helmet of hope. So the helmet is not just salvation, but is the hope of salvation. Because I hope to be saved. I hope to be finally redeemed. I hope to reach that apex of my journey with God. So that I know that I know that I know it cannot be reversed anymore. While I am on earth, my salvation can be reversed. That's why I don't believe in eternal security. Because if I am not submissive to the things that God requires of me for salvation, I can lose it. Just like the soldier going to battle can lose a helmet, but you can pick it up again. So I can lose my salvation if I play around with it. But thank God, there's coming a day when the final completion of my salvation will be over. Praise the Lord Jesus, according to the First Thessalonians 5, verse 8. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we hold on to this for the hope of salvation. A helmet, therefore, is a helmet of victory. This is what the scripture says was referring to in Isaiah 59 verse 17. The helmet of victory. And it is the helmet that is more ornate than functional battle helmet. So here we find a dichotomy. A, an opposition, a opposing situation. So we talk about, firstly, Sister Richards, the helmet of salvation. But now we're talking about the hope also of salvation. But when Isaiah mentioned the helmet of salvation, in Isaiah 59, 
verse 17, Isaiah was not talking about the, the battle helmet that was upon the Lord Jesus Christ, upon Jehovah God. Are you with me? Amen. What Isaiah was talking about, Isaiah was talking about that ornate, that ceremonial, that glorious helmet that the Lord will put on. Because the battle is over and he's now triumphantly parading with his team that we now have full victory in oh god as one songwriter said and when the battle is over i shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown brother ramsey in the new jerusalem praise the lord jesus so it demonstrates that the battle has already been won so Isaiah 59, 17, therefore, says first, uh, was a prophetic word to us. But for us, we have to still wear the helmet of battle. But God was wearing the helmet of victory because he sees victory already done. How many knows that when Jesus look at you, he sees you as completely fully saved? How many know that when the eternal God looks at you, says, and that's why you need to have confidence when you pray, when you walk. And, and can I just talk to you a little bit and forget everybody else for a moment and be selfish? When you are in church like this, you need to forget everybody and focus on God. You know why? Because when God looks at Latoya Richards, he doesn't see Latoya Richards struggling. He doesn't see Latoya Richards with all kind of pressure and can't pay the bill and Joshua and he sees you as rejoicing with him in glory. Yes, 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 yes. What does that mean? He sees you with victory already completed. And although every now and then the devil come and trip you up, the Lord still rejoice over you because he said, I know because I've already died for you. I know that you can dust yourself off and get yourself back in line and walk with me because we're going to victory. Hallelujah. Human beings cannot do this. Human beings cannot count their chicken before they are hatched. But God can do it because he knows the end from the beginning. Ha. And the Bible said, my Bible tell me the Lord know it, them that are his. Ah, this is good word. This is good word. This is good word. So he knows that the battle has been won. So when you praise God, you need to praise God. For, sometimes you need to just get up and praise him and thank him for the finished work. Thank him for working on me. Yes, my work is over. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Praise God. The saints, though, are to take this helmet. You know, Brother Williams, I hope I'm not confusing you. But as a child of God, sometimes we have to take off the helmet of battle and take the helmet that God is giving you, a helmet of victory, and do a little victory dance right, to encourage right, yourself. Right, Take the gift from God. And when, Sister Richards, we put on our battle helmet, we need to rejoice. Why? Because we are going by the matters into battle, knowing that the battle is already won. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. The battle is already won. Praise the Lord Jesus. In time, I am struggling, but the battle is already won. If you don't believe me, just look at the back of the book. Hallelujah. 
Just look at the back of the book and the back of the book tells me that when the battle is over, we are on the winning side. Anybody that's on the Lord's side is already on the winning side. That's right. So take the helmet of salvation from God. Go into battle and stand in the heat of the day of battle in full confidence of the outcome of the battle without without any wavering with no uncertainty in your mind knowing full well brother ramsey that we already have victory Though the enemy is coming in like a flood, we can rejoice. And that's why Satan don't like us. Because we have a way of rejoicing when he's still throwing blows. Hallelujah. We are still singing and nothing disturbs. I don't know about you. But nothing disturbs me more when I was growing up. And all the siblings were in the house, Sister Richards. Nothing bothers me more than when they were teasing me and I am upset and they are laughing. God, it could hurt me. You know when somebody, when you know you are hurting and somebody's laughing, sometimes you feel like you want to forget the pain and kill somebody. Am I the only one that was just a kid? <laughs> Because sometimes, sometimes people do you things and they are laughing and grinning and they don't know how badly it hurt you. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, they are saying, shut up. Oh, no. But you don't know what you're doing to me. And sometimes we hurt our partners and we don't know how badly we hurt them too, you know. Because I was just playing, but I don't know I wasn't playing. I'm hurting here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Sorry. Sometimes, but you know, we can say through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. I've learned to trust in God. So I thank him for the mountains. And I thank him for the valleys. And I thank him for the storms he's brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we have to go into battle with certainty. Even when we are under pressure, when you have on the helmet of salvation... Somebody is putting you under pressure, but you can smile in their face. As Job said it well, Brother Jay, though he slay me, all my appointed time sets the devil off when he sees you still worshiping God. When he still sees you and they say, but isn't this the person that I was just bothering this morning? Isn't this the person last night that I put to hell as it were? But here they are in the house of God, still lifting their hands, still magnifying God. You know what we're still singing? Still I will trust you. Still I will follow. Still I will listen to your every call. I just can't give up now I come too far from where I started from nobody told me that the road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Every time, every time you are in trouble, you should remember parts of this song and sing it and let the devil get mad and let him get upset because you say, what more must I throw at these people instead of you crying, instead of you 
being upset with one another. Instead of you being vexed, who do you what? Let us sing a song. The reason that doubt is cast aside is because the same helmet that God wears according to the original language in Isaiah 59 verse 17 is the same one he hands to you. He said, rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. Rejoice with me. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. I feel the spirit of rejoicing under pressure. These are the days when the enemy is throwing the kitchen sink at us. Whatever he can throw, even the garbage bin. But we are still standing up and be counted. We are still saying, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep walking. And I want to encourage somebody who may be down and out today. I want to encourage you that you, you may be really way down deep in distress and sorrow, fear and temptations. Everything may just be burdening you. And somebody may be saying, but, but you have house and you have car and you have, you have something, you have a good job. But they don't know the burden you carry on the inside. But I want you to know that the great God is always looking out for you. And he wants you to know that he has already put a helmet upon you. If you are not saved, you need to put on the helmet of salvation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Without salvation, you don't have a chance. Salvation means to be saved. To be pulled out from the mess of sin. And commit yourself to Christ. He'll give you the armor. Which is the helmet of salvation. Among other things. That you can joy in tribulation. So somebody ask, what, Sister Morgan, she's a step leader, what is the purpose of the helmet? What is the purpose of the helmet, Brother Kadim? What is the purpose of the helmet? The helmet, praise the Lord Jesus. The helmet mainly serve as, first of all, protection against the deadly Ramophia. Can you, can you note that, please? The first purpose of the helmet is to protect you from the Ramophia. Praise the Lord Jesus. So somebody's asking, what is that? What is... Sister, I wish I could ask Sister Taylor to come here for me very quickly. No, I can't? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Now, I just wanted to get me a machete. That's all I needed. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody clap your hands. Our God is good. Our God is good. When you have on the helmet of salvation, you are protected from the wiles of the dragon. Oh, yes. When you have on the helmet of salvation, you are protected from the brute force of the enemy. You know, sometimes we quiver and we worry about how Satan is bothering us. If the Lord ever move away one of his armor and allow the real armor of the enemy to attack you, you recognize that he's shielding you. That's why he gives us the, 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 the shield of faith. That's why he gives us the belt of truth. That's why he has given to us the breastplate of righteousness. Praise the Lord Jesus. Are you coming to me or them? Praise the Lord Jesus. 
So the Ramafia is something akin to what I'm holding in my hand. Only that it was a two-edged dagger of about four feet in length. Praise the Lord Jesus. What is called a broadsword. About four feet in length. I look a bit longer than this. But the enemy in battle, once they fire and get up close to you, the, it, the handle was long enough that you have to hold it with a two-handed thumb. So it was different from a sword that the skillful man used to shield off. And what this broad sword was used for, the Romafia was used for, is to, is to chop in the head or to decapitate. So it would split the head or the skull in two or to take the head off by the neck. And that's why if you notice the helmet went all the way down to the neck and had a little tail that protects the spine and then it had a visor before it. So we are protected when the enemy comes in and ready to. Hallelujah. Oh, we have protection. Yes, we have protection. We have protection. It was a double-edged sword which required a two-handed grip. And it is often carried by the calvary Calver man who would swing at the head of the enemy soldier in an attempt to split the skull and to decapitate and to cut off the head completely of the soldier. How many know that this is what Satan wants to do? Sometimes Satan draw not a, not a, is, is not trying to throw some stones or throw some darts at us. He wants to get up close and he really wants to end it for you and me. Pshu, pshu. But thank God for the helmet of salvation. Yes. Thank God for the helmet of salvation. Praise the Lord Jesus. It is said that even with some of the mightiest men, the quality of the helmet allows the helmet to sufficiently deflect the blow and save the life of a soldier when he's in combat. The same thing happens to us. The helmet of salvation deflects the blows that was intended to kill you. That was intended to decapitate you. When the enemy thought he had you in a corner, he sometimes come in for the death blow. But thank God for the armor. That's right. Thank That's God right. for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank God for this no soul salvation. Hallelujah. The helmet protects us. Praise the Lord Jesus. So the helmet of salvation is powerful. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. This work of salvation has already been accomplished. I skipped. This work of salvation has already been accomplished. The soldier has already received therefore the Holy Ghost at this point in the fight. So there is no spiritual fight where Paul mentions here until we are redeemed. You can't fight spiritually until you join the battle. And you can't join the battle until you are saved. That's right. So if you want to be saved you have to put on the armor of God and get in line and you have to be saved so this helmet of salvation is very powerful is a reference to the hope of salvation so when you look at the hope of salvation the hope of salvation I'm sorry I'm only speaking here to a specific class or group of people and I'm not meaning as a preacher, as a teacher to be rude but I want to make the 
distinction that the Holy Ghost makes. Because every now and then the Holy Ghost makes a distinction between his people and those who are not his people. With a view to encourage those who are not yet submitted to him to come to him before it's too late. Because when we talk about the hope of salvation, the only people with the hope of salvation is those with the armor of God. So you don't stand a chance until you are repentant. Until you have been baptized in his name. Until you begin to walk this walk of faith. That's right, that's right. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you must be saved. So when the scripture addresses certain people, you know there are three classes of people that are found in the scripture. I'm skipping from my notes a bit. Three group of people that are found in the scripture. One is a sinner. The heathen. Two, the Gentiles. The Jews. The Gentiles. Right, let me just put it more succinctly. The Gentiles, the Jews, and the child of God. Three class of people. The Gentiles, the Jews, and the people of God. So we couldn't stand a chance to be Jews because we are not directly from Abraham's loins. So that count us out. We are not God's people because we were not born into his family. So we are Gentiles. But Salvation has been offered to us Gentiles. And that's why Jesus died on Calvary's cross. To bring redemption to those who want to cross over from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Thank you, Jesus. That's why you should come into the ark and be saved. That's why you should be saved and not waste another day, another moment in sin because these wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, Everyone can be saved. Everyone ought to be saved. And the Bible said, Sister Richards, salvation was first of the Jews. So of all the people in the world that was offered salvation, it was to the Jews first. And then to the Gentiles. But you see, when God make the Jews, he still keep them as Jews. When God picks out of the Gentile, he don't allow the Gentile to remain Gentile. He pick out a people for his name. Yes, 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 yes. He call them the church. He call them his bride. Therefore, we have a pride of place. We are no more Jew nor Gentile, but we are the people of God. When you are born again, you have the privilege to be called the people of God, the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is we are the bride of Christ we are the born again we are the called out we are the ecclesia we are the ones who have been picked out by God hand picked by God how many want to thank God for salvation 
How many want to thank God that he counts you in? I can't finish this portion, but I'd like to tell you something. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8 was speaking to the people who have already been picked out. The people who have already been saved. And it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope, hallelujah, of salvation. Yes, 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 yes. What a lively hope. What a powerful hope. What a beautiful hope. Don't let Satan rob you of this powerful hope that we have in God. No weapon that's formed against us can prosper. And none that trust in him shall be ashamed. In other words, 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, Paul reminds us that the helmet really is the hope of salvation. So when I talk about the helmet here, don't think I'm talking about putting on a hat or a cap. You're putting on salvation as your helmet. Yes, 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 yes. So when you are saved, salvation is your helmet. Yes. Salvation, protect the torture. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, God. So the fact that the helmet is related to salvation indicates that Satan would like to have each believer stripped of his salvation and his future hope of heaven. Brother Mattison, that's why you come under so much pressure. Because Satan wants to rob you of your salvation now and rob you of heaven later. Because he knows he cannot be saved and he's not going back to heaven. But we have a lively hope. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to give God praise for loving us, for caring for us, for giving us life, for offering us. And you know, in making the choice, he did a number on us. That is he, God. Because when he was making a choice, he didn't come and say, all right, Sister Latoya, you come and leave your brother or leave your father. He said, whosoever will, may come. may come. But when you come, you make that choice and he receive you as if he said, you come. That's right. Praise the Lord Jesus. So under God's economy, you choose yourself to be saved. If you choose to be lost, it's a choice you make. If you choose to walk with him, it's a choice you make. Praise God. The songwriter said, I'll choose you again and again. You mean so much to me, dear Lord. I will choose you again. God, which you bless you this evening. I want to ask God to strengthen you with might in the inner man. In spite of the pressures that you're undergoing. In spite of the situations that you are going through. I want you to know that there's a loving God. In spite of you writing off yourselves from the commonwealth of Israel. In spite of you feeling as if you are underprivileged or having no hope at all. He has already chosen you. He has already died for you. When you were an enemy of the cross, he died that you might have life. And that more abundantly. The Lord loves you, sir. He loves you, ma'am. And he wants to save you. Yes, we have all made mistakes. We have all messed up. From sinking sand, he lifted me. 
And with tender hands, he lifted me from shades of night to rays of light. Oh, praise. I want to give him thanks for the possibility of somebody else coming out just because of this message. For something that is in somebody's spirit that is rising you up. That is saying to you, get up from out of your bed of complacency. Get up from out of your, your, your kind of neglect. Because the Bible said, how shall we escape if we neglect? Put aside. Dare to gi not give heed to this great salvation. This powerful tool that God has given to us. To escape his wrath. I trust that you will be saved. I trust that you will submit yourselves to the Lord. God richly bless you. Thank you so much. For giving God an opportunity. To touch your mind. To touch your body. And to touch your spirit. Put on. The helmet of salvation. Put it on. You know. In closing, I want to say the helmet of salvation like the soldier is not somebody who puts this on your head. You have to take it and put it on. For you to be saved, you have to get up and go into God's storehouse by repentance and put on the helmet of salvation deliberate act. Cover yourself under the blood. Cover yourself by his power. Cover yourself so that you have a chance to be like him in glory. God which to bless you. Thank you for sharing with us today. And may his peace cover you. May his grace surround you and embrace you and shield you from every wiles of the devil so that you can be saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Before the Lord comes back, we must have confidence that we can see him in glory because we have the helmet of salvation. God, which you bless you. Can we stand? Can we stand and we give God praise and glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel Jesus in the house. Can somebody worship God? Can somebody worship the Lord? Can somebody give him thanks for his awesome power? Power to save. The world is rocking and unreeling, but we can have confidence in our God. Thank you, saints of God, for coming to the house of God. Thank you for braving the elements to come out. That these words should rest in your spirit and rest in your heart. And lift you up. And strengthen you with might. In the inner man. Thank you. Precious Jesus. How I love thee. How I lift high my voice to sing your praise. Holy Spirit, I implore you, drench my heart as my lips impart your praise. I am persuaded by this great love you I have been changed to bless your name hallelujah holy spirit how I love you Lord how I love you how I lift high my voice to sing your praise. Beautiful presence of God. Holy Spirit, I implore you. 
Drench my heart. Drench my heart as my lips impart your praise. One more time. I am persuaded. I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I am constrained by the by this great gospel forever to worship you. Oh, Holy Spirit. How I love you. Hallelujah. How I lift high my voice to sing your praise. Oh, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Drench my heart. Drench my heart as my lips impart your praise. Drench my heart as my lips impart your praise. I want to thank you for consistently sharing with Life Tabernacle as we journey through the scripture and the armor of God. I wish that he will fill you with knowledge and power and might in the inner man. It was a pleasure to share the word of God with you. Saints of God, continue to be filled with his power. And please remember that on Sunday, God's willing, will be our Heroes Sunday. The training department is in charge of service and they want me to tell you that you ought to wear your Jamaica colors and you ought to make sure you come on time because there is an awesome provision for you. Uh, before that, we have a powerful, powerful meeting on Friday via Zoom for the youth. And then on Thursday, can I tell you, we have the second of our powerful prayer meeting. Our inaugural prayer meeting via Zoom was held last night. It was powerful. We had over 30 persons sharing with us. It was awesome. And we are looking forward to you sharing with us again. As in these days, men ought always to pray and not faint. We had a visitor with us and we pray her strength. And we are believing God for complete salvation. God is doing a work in these days. So let's lift him up. Amen. Amen. It's our pleasure to share with you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We want to ask God to cover you. Father, we thank you for your words. They are spirit and they are life. You have already imparted them to the hearers. Now, God, let these words germinate. Let, let them take root and let them come up as tender plants. And then into full matured saints of God. Let the transformation begin right now. God Almighty, we pray for those who are yet unborn. Those who need to come into the ark of safety. We pray that you will extend a hand of mercy and grace. And God Almighty, I pray that you will unlock the door so that someone could find salvation. For those who are in the house, keep them safe. Keep us safe. Keep us ready. Keep us prepared. 
Let your anointing fall afresh upon us every day as we seek to please you more and more each day. We thank you for your provision and bless your people everywhere in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, I tell you something that we learned last night. Last night, we learned of a young lady who wanted so desperately to be saved. And she went to church and she got the Holy Ghost. Excitedly went home and told her husband that she wants to be baptized. And the husband really just went out and beat her sore. She was in really deep despair. Prayed and asked God to help. A couple of days later, her father died. And then the same gentleman that beat her died. Well, we need to pray for her that she will open up and allow God to even in this tragedy, baptize her in his name. But it's hard to kick against the prick. Be careful what you do to those who are seeking salvation. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophets no harm. God, which shall bless you. Our mailing address is Life Tabernacle, United Pentecostal Church, 76B Windward Road, Kingston 2. Our email address, all lowercase, life tabernacle 6176 at gmail.com. And you can reach us by the number 876 486 5112. That's 876 486 5112. We'd love to hear from you. And if you're on Facebook or YouTube, like, subscribe, and then share it with somebody else. God, we should bless you. It was a Jesus joy to have you. Shalom. God bless you. We have a godly commitment to render our services in the pursuit of achievable goals under the divine leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our mission statement. God bless you so much. On behalf of the Life Tabernacle team, thank you. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen.